Assalamu alaikum alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu Okay guys, this is a continuation of the Lotus Moon <coughs> which is to occur on the June June 12th, right? Um, and it coincides, uh, interesting enough, there's a conversion of events which one of which is um, uh, Donald Trump's visit to the Singapore summit with North Korea. I think during that time there may, may very well be a assassination attempt, a staged one of course, with all parties of the Hegelian dialectic playing their part in the structure on uh, uh, Donald Trump and it will be a failed one I guess which will more or less um, justify and be a catalyst of uh, North Korea well, the Korea, Korea itself, South and North, being occupied on both sides uh, of the border by China and uh, the USA, respectively. The synthesis, I believe, will be that they will seek to expand the territory of China over uh, Korea uh, in totality. And this is part of China being handed over the reins after they do eventually take down the United States of America. Now, specifically, let's move on to this, the Friday the 13th supermoon solar eclipse. And, and this is more for, so for the benefit of J.K. Bugger and Julian T, um, as they, they're doing a marvelous job of um, decoding the iPad GOAT. And it's multifaceted. It has <coughs> numerous um, occult, I guess, um, um, uh, symbolism uh, encrypted within the animation itself. And um, I think this has got something to do with it, and um, you'll you'll just follow me on this train of thought, and you see exactly where I'm coming from. Again, Friday the Thirteenth, in and of itself, is quite an occult day. I'm sure most of you are aware of that. Uh, but what's interesting is this is a very rare celestial occurrence. Um, the last one that happened was on the December the Thirteenth, which was on in 1974, and the next one that would happen will be on the September the Thirteenth in uh, 2080. So it's a very rare occurrence, but what stood out to me, and uh, you'll understand that um, EarthSky.org is almost an authority. One of the one of the ones that the mainstream tabloids kind of glean their information from and maybe produce articles on in relation to uh, uh, celestial events. And um, what stood out to me is the description they used, and which is no serendipity, uh, a bite out of the solar disk. Now this, as soon as, uh, I guess, uh, I'm pretty certain that J.K. Bugat will straight away almost instantly pick up on exactly what I'm alluding to uh, here, and which is, if you follow me on this, um, is the bite that this pharaonic um, character is taking from the head of this child, which is a male, uh, a son, as it were, right? Uh, this is at least my... Uh, advantage my my understanding of this you know and um, you're welcome to um, disagree with that but he's taken a bite out of him and that's the interesting part because I'm sure there was an indication of the moon somewhere as well in the eyes and this is something that JK Bogat alluded towards uh, a reflection on the floor and there was a moon there and uh, him uh, taking a bite out and interesting enough what we've got over here is reference about uh, the moon that takes about a bite out of the solar disk. So I think this is the timeline that's been referenced here. Now this individual, he's very interesting, this character. And again, maybe I don't know whether J.K. Bogart or even Julian have um, uh, noticed this or have been made aware or are already aware of this. But this individual um, is a representation of Ramesses II. Now there's a, a plethora of passages in the Quran which refers to Moses and Pharaoh and um, <clears throat> the Exodus and in which there's discussions about uh, uh, Pharaoh and how he was drowned in the River Nile when the sea was parted uh, and um, uh, the Nile was parted sorry and um, uh, he, he, Pharaoh along with his army was um, drowned in that and in that um, Pharaoh was about to testify in the oneness of uh, the God of Moses, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, uh, the one God. And um, uh, as I guess uh, it dawned on them that <clears throat> his um, end was nigh and um, because of that he accepted uh, Moses' his God due to his um, um, the failure, I guess, in uh, Moses, Musa, victory. 
uh, Musa al Islam and Moses are one of the same. It's just Arabic. In Arabic, we say Musa. Um, at any rate, um, this is this is his body that was discovered, and now it it kind of um, has uh, done a global tour, but also um, um, it's kept in a museum there. And um, when the angel, the angel, as we understand, this is the Islamic perspective, a, a lump of mud was thrown into his mouth because he was about to testify in the God of Moses and uh, uh, bring faith in him. And the response was Al-An, that now you believe. And um, Subhanallah, um, uh, 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 just because the angel was concerned that maybe perhaps he will believe in God in his infinite mercy may accept that of him. And in that, uh, I guess, uh, uh, with that concern, he, he, he got some mud and um, stuffed it into his mouth so that he could not uh, declare faith in the oneness of God because he'd already done, uh, uh, well, he caused a lot of corruption on the earth. Uh, and, you know, at his last breath, uh, to, to believe would be almost like cheating. Um, um, uh, the revelations that came to him and all the corruption that he had caused at the time. At any rate, um, this individual, you see that he's eerily similar to this individual. What's also interesting, I guess, guys, and I don't know if you noticed, one eye is open, and this is, I think, is central to the religion of Ad-Dajjal, the Antichrist, which is going to be about the pineal gland, uh, the above the 33rd vertebrae, which is referred to as this New Age religion, as the third eye, we understand that the eye of Ra, at least Islamically, uh, 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 our position is that Kafa Ra will be written on the forehead of a Dajjal, Lanatullahi, the Antichrist. And it's interesting that when he comes out of uh, the um, uh, womb, as it were, and the water breaks, in this particular animation, what you see is the eye of providence marked on his forehead as well. Uh, again, it's just these are very interesting um, um, um talking points and um, uh, uh, convergences between hadith uh, Islamic uh, narrations narrated by the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam may peace and blessings be upon him and um, we we I guess glean our information from that uh, again on the beard you've got the pyramid pointing down as above so below so again it uh, alludes towards this individual being a pharaonic individual and then you've got Freemasonry which gleans most of its uh, doctrine from ancient Egyptian um, uh, occult uh, knowledge. And um, uh, like I said, this individual it seems to be a representation, a very clear one in fact, doesn't seem to be, he is a representation of this particular individual, which is Ramesses II. So I thought I'd point that out as well. Maybe perhaps you can take this somewhere else and um, uh, go on another journey with that information. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best. Anyway, Jazakallah khairan wa sunnah jazakallah for your time. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.